And there are two particular research studies that I think really help us um, bring home the concept of why we can um, build our awareness in, a, in this unique and special way. And the first one is a study that was done um, in Finland around 2013 or so. And what they did was they gave the people in the in the experiment a two silhouettes of the human body, two blank or black silhouettes. And to the right of, of it, there was a phase of an expression or a video or a word that suggested a particular emotion. And what the people in the um, study were asked to do was to color in on one silhouette using like the yellows, orange, reds. When they experienced that emotion, where in the body might they notice a corresponding increase in sensation or feeling? In contrast, uh, if there were an emotion where they felt a decrease or a dulling or a numbing sensation when they experienced a particular emotion to color that in blue. And if they felt nothing at all, it was kind of neutral, just leave it black. Now here's what was really interesting. This study, took a cross section of people across Europe and Asia. So it was cross gender, cross generational, cross cultural. And when they superimposed the silhouettes with each of the emotions, what they noticed was that we generally hold the same types of emotions in the same general areas of the body. Now, what we also know is that there's, there's been increasingly new research that's augmented how we believe emotions are made and this study isn't as complex as some of the new, newer studies. And one of the things that we have to know about is that, for example, I may look at the face of someone in a room, and to me, it looks like they are concentrating and like, whew, they are concentrating on something really important. But someone right next to me might say, why is that person so angry? Look how mad they are. And so I look at it as concentration. Somebody else translates it as anger. That's where in studies like this, there can be a little bit of a hiccup because the, the um, emotions that were presented may or may not exactly represent the emotion that was intended. For our purposes, it's actually really not that important because what we're talking about is how do I perceive it? So we know what we perceive as something that looks like anger. We know what we perceive as something that looks like frustration, sadness, joy, celebration, love. So that's what's important. We're going to use our own definition sets. But what's good to remember here is that those corresponding physiological sensations sit in the body. So why do we care? Well, this next study tells us why we care, why we should care. And in this one, it was really interesting. This was done out of uh, Iowa State University. It was called the Iowa Gambling Task. And what they did was they brought people into the study and they gave them four decks of cards, two red and two blue. Now, what they didn't tell them was the red decks were rigged they were not going to win as, as much with the red decks. And the way to win the most was to play with the blue decks. So they gave them a particular gambling game, you know, say like Blackjack 21, or I'm not a gambler, so I don't know all the games, but say some kind of, you know, um, gambling game. And they just said, just play, win as much as you can. So people began and at about 50 cards in, they started to have a hunch or, you know, that gut instinct, like something's going on. Something might be a little off. I don't know. Maybe it has to do with those red cards. I'm not really sure. I'll keep playing. And it wasn't until about 80 cards in that they got it. Full cognitive awareness, eureka. This is how you win those red decks. They're not going to, they're not going to win as much. Play with the blue. Here we go. Now that was really interesting because what that told us is, at what point do people on average start to have a suspicion or a hunch? And at what point do they actually know something? Now, where it got really interesting was here. Now, the other thing they did was they attached electrodes to the palms of the participants' hands. Now, many of us know that our sweat glands in our body respond to temperature. So when it's a hot day, we perspire. We're under hot lights, we perspire. Um, all of the sweat glands in our bodies respond to temperature, except for the ones in our hands. They respond to stress. So what they noticed was as on average, there was a certain number of cards that on average, as participants started to reach for the red deck, their hands would perspire and instead they'd move to blue and select blue. So I'm going to ask you, you can put it into the chat. 
what what do you think was the average number? And don't answer if you know the answer, because I know. Um, what on average, how many cards in do you think it took for the body to know that there was something going on? Where the palms began to sweat. Fifteen, fifteen, twenty-five. Yeah, I almost feel like we're in an auction. Fifteen, five, twenty-five, twenty-five, five, one, ten. Yes. Okay. Ten, ten. All right. Thank you. So, twenty-two. The answer is ten. On average, as people began to reach for the red deck at about, on average, about ten cards, the hands began to perspire more, and they reached for the blue and selected blue. So, what does this tell us? This tells us that things show up in the body. We have information in the body and it is impacting, influencing our decision-making and our behavior. Now think about this. This was 40 cards before a hunch, before, before an inkling that something was going on and 70 cards before there was full awareness. So imagine what that means for some things like unconscious bias or whether or not we are looking at things with an expansive and broadened lens. Um, there's so much that happens between when it shows up in the body and when it shows up as a full awareness thought in the mind. 